Hello. It is time for the lunchtime live stream. We are going to make a tank top. This is a one and done one hour workshop. We're going to do our best to cover everything needed in this Durango tank top. Um, it's a pretty simple project and it's a pretty great project. It's a racer back tank that I think you're gonna like. It's gonna come in really handy for the summer. And we're gonna make it today. I've got my trusty assistant here with me. He matches the fabric that I chose. So there's that. Um, and I want to also just say I've been out in my studio slash garage all morning getting that ready to have an actual in-person studio here in, um, in the Catskills where I live. We're going to be doing four different retreats. The first one is uh, I think the weekend of June 19th, but you have to check on the website. Don't quote me. Um, anyway, we do two day sewing retreats here. And so we're getting the studio ready to go. I've been power washing the cement floor of the studio to get it ready to paint. Um, we just finished the ceiling. I'm going to be painting the walls. There's all kinds of things happening in there. I've got about a month to finish that up. So it's very exciting and it's also fun. So I am a little bit grubby, um, but didn't want to miss this live stream with all of you to sew the Durango tank. So the Durango tank is a free pattern that you can download from Hey June Patterns or Hey June Handmade. Um, you can find the link over to where they have the free pattern from my website, hipstitch.co slash lunch break. So this is the lunchtime live stream that I do every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern. So I'm trying to cover the lunch times of all four of the time zones in North America. Um, so hopefully one of those time zones work for you, or if you're watching the recording, that's great too. You could probably find the link in the description below if you want to go ahead and sew this with us. Like I said, it's a completely free pattern. This is a free sewing lesson. You just need to find the fabric. So let's get started. I have not cut the fabric. I have cut the pattern. So let me get my overhead camera going here. Let me get this beautiful assistant out of my way. My timer's out of the way. Okay, I want to show you something. If you use a 55 or 60 inch wide fabric, oh boy, it's going to be like that, huh, Monty? You got to go for a second. You are going to want to move your pattern pieces out of the way. Wow, you are just relentless today. You got to get up, dude. Sorry, oh boy. <laughs> um, so if you're cut, you know, you've got it cut off the bolt, you've got a fold here, right? <clears throat> Here's what I do in a situation like this is I'll cut my piece of fabric off of the bolt. Well, you probably already have a cut piece. Anyway, you're gonna open it up and you're gonna fold into the middle because I'm gonna cut both of my pattern pieces on the fold. So I'm gonna open it up. Wow, you're gonna go outside because this is ridiculous. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I'm folding each side in to have the selvages meet in the middle. So now I have a fold on this side. 
where I can place the back on the fold. And for this tank top, it says cut to. That's fine as well. If you don't want to put it on the fold, you can have a seam down the middle. I'm just going for not having a seam down the middle. So I've got my back on the fold. And then if I scoot that over, I can put my front. Yeah, my do not want to go outside. The power washer is very loud and scary. And my husband is using it right now. So I think that's why he didn't want to go outside. So I'm just going to have to work around the cat. Okay. So now make sure the edge that says um, fold is on the fold. And also just make sure, you know, you're not wasting a lot of fabric at the top or at the bottom. Okay, if you have a cutting mat and you can get it all um, on the cutting mat, go ahead and use your uh, your rotary cutter. I am just because I can and I don't want to use my rotary cutter. I'm just going to use scissors. So I'm gonna quickly cut this out without cutting Monty's tail off. See all these extra challenges. And this is a great tank too. I just like the cut of it. See how it kind of flares out um, at your hips. I think it's a great shape, very wearable. I'm using like a soft uh, knit, stretchy, but soft, a cute little pattern. Let me just get my neckline cut here. And I cut the size that I need when I cut my pattern out. So just follow whatever size you need. Keep in mind here when you're cutting that pattern, it it's not the, the outermost line, okay? I mean, it's not, it doesn't go in order. It sort of goes backwards from the largest to the smallest. So just keep in mind when you're cutting this on the pattern, it's just a little, funky. All right, so there's my front there's the pattern because it was on the fold. I can open it up and I've got the front of my tank top. Gorgeous. Okay, Monty. <laughs> Let's get the back here. Up, 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 up. I know you love this fabric because it's your colors um and then same thing just make sure your fabric falls flat and nothing's bunching up my back on the fold and Oof, got weird things happening here there we go and you know you would want to pin everything down. Monty, you are just relentless right now. Pin it down. I'm just holding it because it's quicker. One more toss to the floor. See if I can finish it up before he jumps back up. Nope. Gosh, you are just okay. Here we go. Not the best cutting job I've ever done in my life. I'm trying to do it fast to get the idea. Okay, so there's my back. It is also on the fold. The directions do not say to go on the fold. It says to cut two, and that just means you're gonna get a seam down the middle, which is fine. I had set my fabric up so that I was able to get it no seam down the middle. The only other two things you need with this pattern are the neckband 
and you just need one of those and you've got to make sure that when you cut it you have the greatest amount of stretch going the direction of this arrow so there's my greatest amount of stretch going this way Okay, and this is the way that the shirt top uh, front and back, the direction that they were going in. And I've got my selvage over here, so I'm going to actually scooch it over. So there we go. And I'm going to pin this one because if I don't, it's going to not stay down flat and then it's not going to be the right size. This is the neckband. We only have one neckband on our top. So you only have to cut one of these here. I'm gonna do this so I can fall off my table. And then you also, let me just find, here is the armband. We're gonna do cut two on the fold of this one. So this piece is not going to be long enough. So I'm going to wait on that. But I have all this extra I can use. And finish cutting that. So it looks super wide because it's going to get folded. And you could always even make it a little narrower if you wanted a smaller neckband. Just be careful with the rolling when you're cutting stretch. And out this side. All right. Not good enough. Doesn't need to be perfect, people. Okay. Then with the put this in a safe place. With the arm binding, the greatest amount of stretch is going this way. So let's find a spot. See. I think so this is the direction of the stretch that I was using before, but this piece here is not going to be big enough. And all right, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut four of them. So I need two on the fold. But if I cut four, I can sew them together. And I will have enough for an armband. So that is what I'm going to do instead of cutting them on the fold. So I'll give myself an extra half inch seam allowance on the side where the fold should be. So I can sew those together. And then everything else I will cut normally. And the first thing I will sew today is the armband. So I do these things not only just to show you you know, that you can do these fun little tricks, but because it uses way less fabric, like you can use what you have, okay? So it doesn't matter if there's gonna be a seam in this armband binding, because you're not gonna see it on the shirt, or if you see it, it's it'll look intentional. So that is kind of why I'm showing you how to do this. So. 
zoom in a little bit here. I've got four pieces and because they were supposed to be cut on the fold, I can go ahead and put two together. So with that extra half inch seam allowance, so that's why I cut an extra half inch because I'm going to sew them together right here. And I'm going to sew these together right here. Okay. So we head over to the sewing machine. Got my sewing machine cam set up. Now I want to point out my settings here. I've got it on this. My machine has a stretch setting, so I put that on. But I also um, changed it to a zigzag. So on my machine, there's a narrow zigzag, and I have the setting for the width at 1.0. So like I said, it's a very narrow zigzag. Okay, and that's what you're going to want to play around on some scrap until you get the right zigzag. Nothing that like is like going back and forth too wide. You want it kind of scrunched together, but definitely because you're sewing knit, you've got to get the zigzag setting. So here I am going to sew my armband binding. I'm not going to even bother back stitching because I don't want it to get caught up on my machine. Um, if your machine has a tendency to get caught up, here's the trick. Just push it in a little further, kind of start more towards the middle. So pull it off and you've got like a big chunk that you missed right here. See how I, I started here, I sewed, but there's this part that's not sewed. So I just flip it and sew that part. I can get it to go under here. Now it's all sewed. And I'm going to do the same thing on my other arm banding. So that's our arm band. So that's a trick that you can do anytime you're starting. Don't start right at the beginning when you're sewing knits. Start in a little. And I'm not back stitching. It's fine. If you have a small zigzag, not back stitching is okay. And I feel like it leads to less problems with getting the fabric stuck inside the machine. So I'm pulling that off, flipping, and sewing off the other side. Okay. So what that means is now I have two armband bindings the size that I need and I have my neckband binding can you hear my dog snoring these animals are just taking over today dog snoring so loud I have Monty literally on the laptop laptop is his pillow Oh my gosh. And he's on my fabric. Of course, he's on the front of my shirt and the back of my shirt. And now I'm going to have to wake him up and disturb this poor kitty to get my fabric. Sorry, bud. Can I have that? Thanks. Thanks. Oh, 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 thank you. Okay. Now you can go back down, go back down. You're good. I won't disturb you again. All right. <laughs> If I turn this video off for a moment, I believe it will make my cutting table a bit larger on your screen so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I got my bands. I'm going to put those aside for now. And <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm laughing because I can just hear the dog snoring so loud. I really hope you can hear that. He's very tired. Okay. So here we've got the back. And I know it's the back because you definitely would not want this in the front because I think your breasts would hang out the sides. This is the racer back. And we want to put the front 
right on top and match up these shoulder seams, okay? So right here, matched up, lovely pen and pen. Right here, matched up, just lovely like that. And I'm going to sew it. So I'll turn this little camera on again. Slide it over. Oh, sorry, Monty. And so I'm going to not start right, right at the beginning. My friend just keeps blocking me. I can't get under there. OK. You can see I'm doing about a half inch seam allowance, cutting it, and then I'm going to go back and get the little bit that I didn't get at the beginning. There we go. And if you have a serger at home, you can use a serger, but I always recommend um, sewing it first. So, sewing it on your machine with a zigzag and then you can go back and surge the edge i will do that later so i'm not going to do that for now okay one shoulder seam is sewn other one right here start in a little Always just make sure with the knit that it's moving. Like if you are sewing and your garment is not moving through, adjust something. That means it's getting sucked into your sewing machine and that can be a big pain in the butt because then you've got to get the screwdriver out so you can take the plate off and pull the fabric out, so. back, flip, so the rest. All right, great. Now my shoulders are sewn. Next, side seam. You can see it's a roomy, a nice roomy tank, which, you know, if you wind up doing it and it's too roomy, this is a super easy project to adjust as you go. It will be adjusting these two scenes that we're doing now. So once I sew the side, I would advise you to try it on and decide, you know, how tight you want it to be. Don't put the binding on and then go, oh no, it's too loose, I wanna take it in because that will be a lot harder to do. So I am just pinning the side all the way down. And they are for the most part, the same height, beautiful. And then I'm gonna rotate and do the same thing on this other side. Now it's, if you're laying just like fabrics flat, so if you're just kind of like laying them on top of each other, it's not gonna reach. So you're going to have to pull the front and make it line up with the back side, okay? So that is what we're doing here. We're making sure that these edges line up very nicely. And then when they do, pinning them so that the ball of the pin is off of the fabric. So you can easily 
slip it out while you sew. I'm actually really excited about this top. I think it'll be a good little summer top. Um, I can work out in it or I can just wear it when it's hot and I want to have a sleeveless top. Okay, so there it is. I'm trying to see the whole picture there. So I'm going to do same settings on my sewing machine. Sewing the side. And I'm going to start at the top. And sew down the side on both sides. I'm starting at the top and working my way down. Okay. If you don't have a serger, because we're sewing knits, it's super easy to make your raw edges more finished. After you sew it, all you have to do is use your scissors and cut it with regular scissors, not pinking shears, regular scissors, cut it up against where you sewed to make a nice clean seam, uh, seam allowance. And it's not going to run because it's a knit fabric. Okay. So, like I said, switch over to the other side. Because we have the balls of the pins hanging over the edge of the fabric, I can flip it and sew on the other side so I can start at the top and work my way down. And don't forget, I'm keeping the edge of the presser foot lined up with the edge of the fabric. Oh, I want to say hi back tonight, Angel Rose. Monty says hi back. Monty has decided he's done with me and isn't in the way, but um, yeah, glad you guys are here and watching the live. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'll try to pop back every so often and look at the live stream comments, but let's keep sewing. Okay. So at this point, like I said, try this on, I'm not going to, I feel like it's looking good. I feel like it's looking a little big, but, um, I didn't have a chance to wash my knit before I did. So it's going to have some shrinkage. So I'm going to leave it how it is. I don't need it to be a tight fitting top so i think it's going to be just fine um should i look at the directions i'm not even going to look at the directions i'm going to move on to the bands what did i do with them here they are all right so i've got my thicker neck band and we're going to start with that when you're doing a neckband, and 
most neck bands with knits, this is kind of the standard way um, that I do them. There's lots of different ways to do them. So this is not, you know, the only way, but this is how I find they work pretty well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half the long way and I'm going to put um, some pins. Okay. And I'm going to sew the neck band into a circle with a half inch seam allowance. While I'm here, this is a efficient sewing. Grab your uh, armbands. Now the armbands look ridiculously long, but keep in mind, this is because it's a racer back. So that opening is a little bit bigger than you would think. It's the style of the tank top is, I'm just gonna do the other one as well. The style of the tank top is such that your sports bra or whatever you wear underneath it is probably gonna show. So keep that in mind, that's sort of the style of the tank top. If you want it to be, yeah, it's, I would just wear like a tank top that, I mean, a sports bra that has an, a racer back as well. I'm just going to do that. Probably make it a little bit shorter than my other one. So, you know, and I'll go back and fix the other one too. Anyway, yeah, it's a tank top. Your bra's going to show. Let me just go back and snip a tiny bit off just to even that out. the length of the actual armband, if it's like, you know, that much shorter, not gonna make a difference. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that one's not longer than the other. And just keep in mind too, you don't want anything to flip. Okay, so now I have the ends of my armbands pinned together. I'm gonna sew those with a half inch seam allowance as well as the neck band here. Let's start with the neck band. Because it's a small piece, I'm going to start in a little bit. Sew with that same zigzag and then go back and get the part that you missed in the beginning. And then I can line this right up. Let's see if I can do it. What will happen is it won't have as much of a chance to get stuck because this back one, I can pull it. And that'll help pull the band through. Is it frozen? What's happening? I'm back. Okay. So that's sewn. And same thing. And yes, I am not back stitching. It's okay. We'll all live. I just feel like with this real stretchy knit, the less you back stitch, the easier it will go. Okay, all three of my bands are sewn and they're all connected. So cut them apart. Neck band, arm band, arm band. And what you're going to do is fold them in half with wrong sides touching. You can press these if you want with an iron. I am just going to use my fingers to press them and then use a bunch of pins. And then I'm gonna baste the edges together. So once these are pinned, I'm gonna sew the raw edge so that it'll be easier to sew into my shirt. I'm not sure if they put that in the instructions, but I recommend that always because when you sew these raw edges, once you fold it like this and you sew these raw edges together, it's way easier to then sew that armband to your tank top. You will 
thank me. A lot easier. Okay. So I'm just gonna do the one armband so you guys can see me sew that in. And then I'm gonna do the neck band because I am trying to do this project in the one hour that we have together today. Okay, that looks pretty good. While I'm here pinning, like I said, I'm gonna leave that one aside. And now we've got our neck band. Gonna open it up, it's in a little circle. Where that seam allowance is, I've opened it up and I've folded the band in half. Wrong sides are touching, just like I did on the armband. And I'm gonna pin it same way. It's a lot shorter, as you will notice. And it's probably even shorter than the actual neck band, but what that's going to do is kind of keep the neck from stretching out. So you'll see that'll be nice once we put it in. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Pin, pin, and pin. Set back to the sewing machine. You can take the free arm off if you want to sew in a big circle. I'm going to stay really close to my raw edge. I actually, I think I'm going to bring the stitch length up a little just so it goes a little faster but it is still a zigzag here. Go until you come back to where you started. Pull that off. You're gonna do the same thing with the armband. It's a lot skinnier, so take your time. But so right on the edge, I keep it on a zigzag. It doesn't necessarily have to be because this is really just to base the two edges together, but I'm keeping it on a zigzag, so. Where those seams are, just slow down so you can get over it. With Not a problem. seam I can feel it kind of trying to get over this bump so sometimes if that happens I'll grab it from back, the back and kind of pull gently And 
I'm back where I started. Pull it off. All right. So we've got our neck band, our arm band, and we've got our top. So first thing I want to do is the neck, I think. So I'll put that aside. Go to the neck. I'm going to keep it inside out right now. And what I need to do is I need to mark the four equidistant points around this circle. Okay. The shoulder seams are not going to be those points, but I am going to use the shoulder seams to figure out where that back point is. So I'll put the shoulder seams together and that will give me an idea of where the true back is. And I'm going to mark it with the pin. I'm going to do the same thing to find the front. Boom, boom, boom. And the front is here. Mark it with a pin. And you're just basically, you're using it as a horizontal marking point. So I'm going to straighten that out. Straighten that out. Now, since you have your front and back points, put those together and figure out where the equidistant point is on the side. It's going to be right here, not the shoulder seam. My shoulder seam is back here. My point that I'm marking is here. And same thing on this right side. And I'm going to pin right here. So that will give me the four points for for the neckline. So we've got two here and two here. Now the neck band is, you'll see, a little smaller than the circle. We want that. That's a good thing because it's going to make sure that this neck band doesn't get all stretched out. It's going to kind of bring it in a little bit and make it look great but we need to find the four points of this neck band. So I always start with the seam. I want that to go in the back. So if I make the seam on this side, then I know the front is here. So I'll mark the front with a pin. And while I'm at it, I may as well mark the seam with a pin just for consistency. Then we bring the pins together to find the left and the right. Okay, now keeping the seam of the neck band lined up. We're going to line that up and we're going to go and pin it so that the raw edges are together and the right sides are facing. So where those first two pins line up, I'm going to pin. Next, I'm going to line up the next two pins and then I'm going to pin that together. And you can see, we're going to have to stretch the neck band to sew it into the neck opening. Okay. Then we get the front two points, those pins go together <clears throat> and the left. Now, what I like to do here is try to spread out the difference and stick another pin right in the middle of those four points. So you're gonna want to stretch, see where the bigger neck hole, where that winds up, pin that and work your way around. And I'll show you, it's not as tricky as it seems to kind of stretch as you sew. 
And this is the reason why we basted the neckband before, because it'll make this a lot easier. All right, last one and pin that. Okay, now we're going to, with that same zigzag, we're gonna lay it on to our machine. And I'm gonna do it, I think, so that my, I think I'm gonna do it so that the neck hole of the shirt is going to be up. And it does not matter where you start. So I'm gonna, and I'm gonna make sure it's a nice half inch seam allowance. So when I lower my foot, my foot, um, I see a little bit of fabric peeking out. And that's how I double check that I'm not only sewing the shirt, but I've got the two layers of the neckband, okay? And I want you, every time you stop to take a pin out, make sure your needle is in the fabric. You notice how any time I stop, needle in, and then I give it a little bit of, I'm pulling with my hand up here, okay? Because I want the outside of the shirt, the neck of the shirt to stretch to fit the neck band. And because I'm taking a, a pretty decent size seam allowance, my neck band oops, is not, not as much is gonna show as you think. It's not gonna be as wide as when we basted it. You'll see it'll, it'll shrink a lot. So again, I'm giving it a little bit of a pull, but also not pulling so much that it doesn't advance through like this hand, I'm pushing it away as I stretch. Needle in, pins out, next section, making sure it's all nice and flat. I just set over a pen. It'll happen. It's okay. And with this seam allowance at the shoulder, I'm just pushing it whichever way it kind of naturally wants to fall. Should be coming back to where we started. Here we go, good. One little pucker there. I'm okay with it. Okay. Pulling it off the machine and we get the exciting part of taking a look to see how that neckband turned out. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it. And don't be afraid to cut all this raw edge, but 
I think that, that turned out really nice. All right, so the armhole is going to go the same way. Take your base and armhole. You know where the two points, because I have a seam on both sides, I know where my two points are. So I'm going to stick pins in those. And then those pins will go together. And I can mark my other two equidistant points. So once again, the four points of the neck band are marked with a pin. And we're gonna do the same with the four points of the armhole. Now the armhole, it's almost the shoulder and the side seam can almost be considered our top and bottom. It's really, really close, but let me just see. It's going to be a little bit off. <clears throat> so if you consider your shoulder seam, the point you start with, the one opposite is not going to be the side seam. It's going to be slightly off from the side seam. Pin in my shoulder seam. Then once you put those two together, I'll put another point right here. Keep those pins together in the middle. And my other point is right here. Okay. Same story as the neck band. Take Oh, although I want the shirt to be back inside out, that's going to be way easier. So carefully turn it back inside out. Find an armhole that you put the pins in and let's start matching up our pins. So I've got two here. And again, you are stretching so they match. You aren't gonna have to do as much stretching as you did with the neck. Um, put one in the middle. Match up the pins. Perfect. Another pin in the middle. Match up another pin. Match up the one in the middle. And stick one more pin in there. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and sew that. You can see we are almost done. Doesn't matter where you start. With this one, I feel like I'm gonna stay sewing on my band. Since my band is so thin, I just wanna make sure that I don't I see where it is. So I'm going to sew on my band this time. So it really doesn't matter if you do, but I feel like I can tell where my band is if I have it up. And again, 
get, keep that needle down while you are adjusting the fabric that you are sewing. So here is where I started. Just need to make it back. So over where I started, cut it off, and ooh, didn't cut. Good thing I've got scissors. All right, take a look at what that looks like. And there is our armband here. Looks good. If you want to, you could top stitch. Just test it out before you do the whole thing top stitched. See if your machine is going to stretch out the top stitching. Some machines will stretch it out and then it just does not have a great look. Um, but if your machine does not stretch out the top stitching, I say go ahead and top stitch and then that'll stay out. So we've got our neck, we've got our arm. I will finish the other arm. Uh, we've got two minutes left. I'm going to go over just a tiny bit just to show you a quick hem. I mean, it's super simple. I'm just going to fold it up about a half an inch and I'm going to pin as I go. Make sure my pins are, the ball of the pin is hanging off the bottom. It is a slightly rounded edge, so just keep that in mind. You want the hem to stay slightly rounded. Um, it's longer in the front and in the back than it is on the side is kind of what I'm trying to say. And so the easiest way to kind of do this is just keep going around and pinning. And when you sew it, you could sew that with a zigzag right at the top of the raw edge, or if your machine has the straight stitch for zigzag, you could use that. I will show you what I mean by that as soon as I get back to the machine, because that's what I think I'm going to use. So basically it will appear like a straight stitch, but on the machine, the setting looks like 
two rows of stitching like right next to each other and it does kind of a fun thing where it sews two stitches forward and then one back and two stitches forward and one back and that will build in a stretch like a zigzag like you'll be able to you know go like that once it's sewn um, and still look like a straight stitch so that is what that stitch is in case you didn't know most newer sewing machines have them this straight uh, knit stitch or stretch stitch. Okay, hem, hem, hemming away. I think I'm back to where I started. Don't want to fold too much. A couple more pins and let's head back to the machine. So the straight stretch stitch, God, that's a mouthful, um, looks like this. So on mine, it's three, it has, looks like two stitches right next to each other. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that, start wherever the heck I want to. Well, maybe I'll start on the side. I don't start right in That would be my only um, worry about starting. And then I am going to, oh, I'm over on my screen. I'm going to sew right along the raw edge, not here, because then this will flip down. I wanna sew and stay close to my raw edge. And you'll see, I don't know if you can see, but it, it kind of feels like it's going front, a uh, little bit forward, a little bit back, a little bit forward, a little bit back. So it, this will take a while. Uh, you don't want to have to ever seam rip this, I'll tell you that. If you've got to go because your lunch break is over, I understand I'm just gonna be doing this all the way around the entire edge of the hem of my shirt. So. Ever wondered why on a YouTube video and sewing this is sped up? This is why. I think I'm almost back. Where did I start? Right here where this long thread is that I'm going to cut.
Okay, back to where I started. I just sewed over the beginning just a little. So we'll cut that, bring it back over, and we'll take a look. Look at how nice that looks. Can't really see the stitching, but it looks great along the bottom. And I can show you. It's meant to be sort of tight. Um, but yeah, I can definitely see myself. I'll be wearing this shirt quite a bit. If you have any questions about the Hey June handmade or Hey June patterns, I have that in my head. I have to double check the name of the pattern company, but the Durango tank free pattern, great top. Hope you all make it. And I will see you next week for the lunchtime live stream.